were doing to them, but they were others. And so the question, who then is my neighbor? Sa Tagalog, at sino ang aking kapwa? This is a follow-up question of the expert of the law in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 to 28. Ito po yung the introduction to the parable of the Good Samaritan. You will not understand the parable if you remove it from the context which is in the introductory portion. That is why whenever you read the parable, you have to make sure that you don't begin from verse 29. You have to begin from verse 25. There is an introduction. And the introduction is the conversation between the expert of the law and Jesus. There is a question posed to Jesus. Ang tawag sa ganitong uri ng komentaryo sa banal na kasulatan ng mga hudyo ay Can you pronounce this word for me? Midrash. Midrash ang tawag nila sa sino mang gumagawa ng komentaryo sa isang linya ng banal na kasulatan. Pag-aralan natin ng konti ang mga paraang ginagamit ng mga rabay. The different ways of interpreting texts of the scriptures by the rabbis in the time of Jesus. You see, much of the preaching done by the rabbis was based on specific scriptural texts that were expounded and interpreted for contemporary situations. Ganon din naman ang ginagawa ng mga pari pag nag-o-homily sila. You call that in English contemporization or actualization. You are reading a biblical text, but the text was written thousands of years ago. Now, you are addressing the text to a present-day audience. And sometimes the text doesn't speak to them, doesn't mean anything to them, does not make sense to them. And it is the job of the interpreter, that is the task of the rabbi, the teacher, the homilist, to make sure that this text, which is very remote from the people, becomes actualized or contemporized para maintindihan siya sa panahon ngayon. That is what they call Midrash. Meron dalawang klaseng Midrash. The first is Halakik Midrash and the second is Hagadik Midrash. Ito yung root source ng ating mga sermon at homilia. Hindi tayo original, tayo mga Christian. We have a Judeo-Christian root. Kaya the matrix of Christianity is Judaism. Kapag tayo pumapasok ng ating simbahan at nakikinig sa mga pagbasa at naghihintay sa sermon o homilya ng pare, hindi tayo nakakaiba sa mga sinaunang hudyo na pumapasok ng sinagoga at nakikinig sa komentaryo ng rabay. Dalawang klase ang kanilang mga komentaryo. Halakit Midrash. Ang Halakit Midrash ay umiikot sa batas. Ano bang batayan ng batas na ito sa kasulatan? At ano bang pagkakaog na ugnay ng mga batas na ito? Kung minsan may mga taong lalapit sa akin, sasabihin, Isha, kasalanan bang kumain ng baboy pag Good Friday? Bakit? Ba't mo tinatanong yan? Minsan sasabihin pa nila, hindi ko naman ho kasi sinasadya na imbitahan mo ko sa isang birthday party. There was a birthday party and they served pansit. And I thought it was just pansit. 
And I was eating it already when I noticed that there were, there were chunks of pork in the pancit. And it was Good Friday. I had a heavy conscience. Nagkasaan ba ako? You see, questions like these were raised by Jewish people who wanted to make sure that they were not violating the law because for them, sin is a violation of the law. Did I violate the law if? Ganyan ang halakik midrash. For example, what is the law saying about idolatry? Did I commit idolatry if? What is the law saying about, about the law of the Sabbath day? What is the law saying about my responsibility to my parents? What is the law saying about killing, about stealing, about adultery, about bearing false witness, about coveting my neighbor's wife or coveting my neighbor's properties? You see, gaano man kalinaw ang batas kung minsan lumalabo din dahil sa sitwasyon. Kaya kailangan bigyan ng makabagong interpretasyon at application sa pamamagitan ng pananaliksik. That's where the word halak comes from. Halakik. Because it's about searching. You are searching. Sa pamamagitan ng pananaliksik at pagtutuho ng iba't ibang mga kaugnay na batas para masagot mo yung tanong. And the question is requiring or expecting a legalistic answer. It should be as simple and direct and scripture-based as possible. Yan ang halakik midrash. Maraming beses na nanagay si Jesus sa ganitong klaseng sitwasyon bilang isang guro, bilang isang rabay sa kanyang pagtuturo. Yung mga tipong question, patunayan mo nga kung talagang rabay ka. Ngayon, sa mga eskwelahan, para patunayan mo na ikaw nga ay qualified teacher, you produce a diploma. Master's degree, doctorate degree, license in, mga ganang tipo. No? Nung panahon ni Jesus, wala yan. Kailangan patunayan mo mismo sa pamamagitan ng iyong pagsagot sa mga tanong. Ano ang sinasabi ng batas? For example, may isang babae. May isang babae, nag-asawa siya ng pitong magkakapatid. At yung lahat ng pito ay namatay, kaya nabalo siya ng pitong beses. You remember the passage? Tapos ang question, sa ano question? Pagdating ng muling pagkabuhay at the resurrection of the dead, in the final days, whose wife will she be? Kaninong asawa siya? E pito yung pinakasalan niya dito sa lupa. Ganong classic question. A question like that is a halakik midrash question. Requiring a halakik midrash. Isang tipo ng komentaryo o interpretasyon na nakabase sa batas, the law, what does the law say? That is why the Torah is basically understood as law. Let's go now to the Haggadic Midrash. What is Haggadic Midrash? Yan ang komentaryo gumagamit ng mga kwento, mga talinghaga, mga alegorya, o mga padaisipan. Mas madalas gamitin ni Jesus ang ganitong style ng pangangarap. I would say, as a rabbi, Jesus felt more comfortable with Haggadic Midrash than Halakic Midrash. But He could not avoid the Halakic Midrash questions. Sinasabi ko lang madalas at Haggadic yung style niya. But in reality, He also knew how to engage people in some kind of a conversation over the law in a halakic way. Halimbawa, 
Is it in accordance with the law or not? To heal somebody on the Sabbath day. Diba? Tinanong si Jesus ng question na yan. Anong context ng question na yan? Kung ako yung healer, dapat ba akong manggamot, magpagaling ng may sakit sa araw ng Sabat? Kaya yung araw ng Sabat, araw ng pahinga yan. Kung naggamot ka, kung nagpagaling ka, eh di nagtrabaho ka. Eh ang araw ng pahinga, binabawal ang trabaho. And so, questions like this were posed to Jesus. Nagkasala pa kami. Halimbawa, doktor ka, emergency. Tinawag ka para iligtas mo yung buhay ng isang nag-aagaw buhay. Sasabihin ng mga pariseyo, violation. Violation. Hindi ka dapat magtrabaho sa Sabbath day. Well, Itong kakitiran ng utak ng maraming komentarista, ng maraming mga rabati ng kapanahonan ni Jesus, ito yung madalas niyang batikusin. Kaya si Jesus, mahilig siya magbigay ng mga praktikal na sitwasyon na magpapaisip. Next slide please. Mga praktikal na sitwasyon na magpapaisip sa iyo na hindi nga naman tama na maging alipin ng tao ng batas. Wala ka bang common sense kung minsan parang ganoon ang gusto itanong ni Jesus sa mga kausap niya? Kailangan pa bang itanong yan? Kailangan pa bang i-memorize yan? Ano ka? Di ka ba nag-iisip? 